In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by Dino Tech by Dino Dynamics. For your nearest workshop, visit our website. And with the support of the Ramada Resort, Phillip Island. Well, joining us now at the uh, at the desk is the CEO of the Confederation of Australian Motorsport. As we said, we caught up with him when he just uh, had just got the uh, position, but uh, now he's been there. Well, he hasn't been there all that long, but it's uh, I imagine there's been a pretty steep learning curve to find out all about the world of motor racing. Will you please welcome to In Pit Lane, Eugene Rocker? Thanks, Brett. Eugene. What does Eugene Rocker know about motorsport now that he didn't know when he took the job? Um. Uh, well, seven months is a long time in motorsport. And what I have learned is uh, it's a passionate sport um, with a lot of people that need a lot more support than they've been getting from uh, government. And um, uh, CAMS is probably undervalued and underappreciated and needs to get out and do more work to make sure that they are more appreciated. But I've learned a lot about a lot of things, of course, over seven months. And uh, it's been a pretty exciting and big, uh, it's been a great time. You've learned a lot, obviously, about the good things in most. Yep. What about the bad things? What are the, surely there are moments of over the past seven months when uh, someone coming from outside of the sport where you've had those sort of face palm moments of going, oh, my, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, look, I mean, the, um, the biggest one recently was the government's announcement of um, basically a, a reduction in the funding that CAMS gets from the federal government. You know, it might shock your viewers to know that we get less from touch football. Uh, but touch football is so huge. Absolutely, and produced many world champions, I suspect. But, um, you know, motorsport is the fourth most watched sport in the country, probably first or second in the world. We generate an economy. Um, you know, uh, motorsport in Australia is uh, synonymous with success, and yet um, we're getting 369 grand going backwards. And that's disgraceful. And we made it very clear to the government. We've been very vocal about it. Uh, we've spoken to government about their uh, priorities. And uh, we hope that that's going to be something that will be heard in the, in the corridors of power. So that in time, politically, CAMS and all the relevant delegates and supporters of motorsport will get behind us in um, you know, rattling the cage. It's not good enough. I suppose it's an interesting thing you know, from a government point of view. I mean, when you look at motor racing, and we get this on Channel 31 all the time and here at RMIT, where people look at the sport, they look at things like the Victorian State Championship, the sports cars. Your first you know, four or five cars on the grid in the sports cars are four or five million dollars worth yep. of machinery. Yep. And then they're saying, well, you know, why you guys can't cry poor. No, well, you can, because out, I was on the weekend, on the weekend I was out at Geelong Motorsport Park and uh, 50 to 60 passionate uh, motor carna or carna cross getting out there and I was out there actually volunteering and helping. Uh, they were doing race control out of a caravan, um, an, an unair conditioned or unheated caravan. Um, this sport um, doesn't get a much, much support from an infrastructure point of view. Sure, we've got some private tracks and selected government tracks, but the reality is that the, the money that government puts into other sports, um, we're a drop in the ocean. We're in fact less than, point, less than 0.5% of the total funding for sport last year. So there is lots of grassroots sport that can be assisted by more, more investment by the government and we're going to keep on trying our best to develop the sport. Is that something that the sport hasn't been particularly good at? I mean, from my point of view, you're coming from a sport, you know, from your years with, with, with AFL, with North Melbourne and with Collingwood, where it's a team-focused sport. Uh, Brian Taylor just recently said on 3AW, he said that he found motor racing was the most selfish sport that he had he had seen. Is that one of the problems is that a lot of people, they can't see past the front of their own car, they're, that's all they're interested in, and they look, don't see the big picture? I mean, look, the nature of sport is that individuals in particular, even though they're supported by a team, are very, you don't want to use the word selfish, but very focused. From the very top down to the, the ordinary kid running around in a, in a car across. However, I think generally people love the sport. And I keep reminding people whenever I'm travelling or going to state council meetings or getting out and about at, at venues that always come back to what's good for the sport. And ultimately, um, you know, those elements of selfishness will hopefully be pushed behind because there's not much point racing on your own. And so the reality is that if we don't support grassroots motorsports, 
we are going to be racing on our own. So CAMS has got a very strong strategic objective to get out and help the clubs, make sure that we're out and present, uh, cut the red tape, make it easier for people to get involved in motorsport and ensure that it's being pushed up from below rather than necessarily seen to be an elite sport at the very top. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get on to more of that after. We're going to take a break right now. Sure. But when we come back, we'll have more with our special guest, Eugene Rocker, CEO of the Confederation of Australian Motorsport. You're watching In Pit Lane, live from the studios of RMI TV in Grand Prix City, Melbourne. We'll be right back. That's another attempt to time it with that crane shot. We're here with Eugene Arocca from the Confederation of Australian Motorsport. And Eugene, we're talking about uh, you were out at uh, the, the track down at uh, down at Geelong, that uh, venue down near the Avalon. Um, tracks are one of the uh, one of the big things. If I came to you right now and said, I have a block of land 25 minutes outside of Melbourne. Um, we can, we've got a drag strip built there. We've got a there's a circuit racing track there. There's even an, a banked NASCAR oval. I imagine Cairns would be absolutely delighted and yet we have that out at Calder Park and the place just isn't being used. Is that something that Cairns have been looking at to, to try and do something to get that track back? You must be a fly on the wall because most of the seven months that I've been at Cairns I've been meeting with people about the tracks and I've actually gone out and seen Rodney. I actually met Bob too but I've actually met, spoken with Rodney and I think Calder is one of those iconic tracks that if something doesn't happen soon we're going to lose and perish the thought that if there was a government in power that let Calder go under or didn't support it, um, there'd have to be a backlash because everyone knows about Calder and in fact, sadly, most people think it's still running, but it isn't really running, if you know what I mean. It needs a lot of love. So we're not only just talking about Calder, there are about six to ten projects that are in the air at the moment around the country, but CAMS has got its fingertips in. Only recently the Northern Territory Government announced the $9 million upgrade of their track at Hidden Valley and we've been involved behind the scenes there. So. I've really made it a priority for CAMS to get active, talk to councils, um, certainly speak to government where possible, keep highlighting the importance of uh, motorsport, particularly in regional areas. But something 25 kilometres or 25 minutes out of Melbourne is something we really don't want to let go. So we'll fight hard, but ultimately um, it needs a lot of love and a lot of money and we'll just keep so, working So what feedback it. are you getting from Rodney and I think that's the problem. There's a lot of confusion out there because yeah. there seems to be a wall of silence as to yeah. you hear different rumours. It's closing, it's not closing, they're open for business. What's well, well, the current Rodney's, state? Rodney's preoccupied at the moment, as you might yeah. have seen, but um, uh, he took possession of the track on the 15th of December. Yeah. So he's literally only had possession over the last four or five months. He said to me, and I'm not breaking any confidences, he has an enormous emotional connection to the track. He literally grew up on the track. So if he has his way, he'll be doing everything possible with our assistance and probably with government assistance to get called to back up to at least a, a decent circuit track. The Thunderdome is another issue. Um, but I think he's certainly got the willingness. Um, what we need is funds and support and government um, and hard work. So we'll, we'll certainly roll up our sleeves and if it doesn't happen, it won't be for one of trying, both from Rodney and from Cams. Mm. You mentioned uh, Rodney, I mean, and, and the Jane family. I mean, there's been an interesting relationship between the, the Jane family and, and Cams over the years. Part of that was the uh, setting up of the, the AASA, which is, is still out there. One of our viewers asked the, the situation, what's the situation now regarding uh, Cams officials volunteering at AASA meetings? Because there's a lot of people, particularly up at the Winton Rant area, they like to be involved and they couldn't do that. Look, the reality is that... Um you know, CAMS is the preeminent regulatory authority in Australia. Um, we um, do what we do and support development of young drivers. We support development of the sport. We're there lobbying. We're not, we're not um, concentrating on Winton and Wakefield. Double uh, ASA, I went to Mick Ronk's funeral a couple of weeks ago. I know Bruce Robertson pretty well. We take the view that we'll do our stuff and they can do their stuff. We're not going to try and pick a fight with them, to be brutally honest. Um, but it does stretch a little bit when our officials are working essentially for the opposition. And so from my point of view and the board's point of view, um, CAMS is the preeminent authority. You should be working for CAMS. We don't have any problems with grassroots racing at Winton. Um, and it's probably something we will address in time because obviously there's a shortage of volunteers and officials, but primarily we want CAMS trained officials to work at, tra at CAMS events. And you know, it's a very diplomatic answer, I guess, but I've said from the very start that AASA can keep doing what they're doing we're going to keep doing what, we're going to, what we've been doing, but probably better. Uh, and ultimately, um, but I think people need to be reminded, we put money back into the sport as a general 
uh, more holistically from, F, from F1s right down to grassroots, not just concentrating on selected tracks. You mentioned the uh, a possible shortage of officials. We have a situation this weekend which many, many years ago, and I'm talking sort of back in the 70s, uh, couldn't have happened. We've got a meeting down at Phillip Island, the Shannons Nationals. We've also got one of the longest running, biggest historic meetings happening up at Winton. Uh, and we've got that problem of trying to fill. The, it happened last year with the state championship, yep. or with Island Magic and with the Shannons Nationals. Is there any way that we can stop this sort of oh, thing we, happening? Well, if we don't, we're in, we're in serious trouble. Um, CAMS have got about 7,000 odd registered officials. We think there's a pool that could go up to 10,000. We're not doing enough to get young people into the sport, both as officials and as competitors. We have to come up with incentives, loyalty programs, um, proper recognition. I don't think, and I come from an industry where you know, volunteers are involved in footy clubs still today and get properly recognised for that. I, I don't think we've done a good enough job of that. So one of our strategies will be to get out to clubs and help them recruit and also engage, engage with younger people to get them involved in the sport, both as officials and or competitors. Because there's no better way. I had one of my staff members out at Sandown and he came in and he did two days of flagging. He thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. So we're getting our CAMS employees out on the tracks and we're listening to what's happening. And then we'll come back and then find ways to ensure that we're recruiting more officials and more volunteers who are proud to be a part of CAMS and be pr proud to be a part of the sport. You mentioned with young people there, uh, we saw and mentioned uh, Chelsea Angelo winning her first race uh, on the weekend and there's lots of young talent in, in Formula Ford and I suppose they're starting to think, oh, here's this Danica Patrick syndrome you know, just because she's a woman. But really, I've said to people, we can't underestimate how important her success could be in bringing on a new generation of people who aren't involved in the sport now. Uh, one thing about motorsport is that uh, unlike football, you can actually compete at the highest level. Um, because you've got a vehicle and of course as long as you've got the skills then you should be able to compete. CAMS has set up WAMS, I think you may know about women in Australian motorsport. We had Susie Holt as a guest at the marquee at the, uh, at the Grand Prix. Um, we're certainly committed to supporting women in sport and I think we've got about a 35% to 40% spectator statistic. We need to get more women involved in the sport, both from a volunteer and from a competitor. What Molly Taylor is doing overseas is sensational, of course, supported by CAMS. So we're very, very strong on supporting um, all, all people getting involved, but in particular women. Just before we go, um, looking at the, the long-term issues in, of, uh, of the sport, where would you like to see the sport in, say, five years' time after your, your time is... CEO. Uh, I'd love to see, at the moment we have some 20,000 licensed competitors, I'd love to see 30,000 licensed competitors, I'd love to see 12 to 15,000 volunteers, I'd love to see a vibrant competitive uh, junior development in the clubs, I'd like to see CAMS more outspoken on community issues such as road safety and more important I'd love to see the Grand Prix still going around in 2017 and equally I'd love to see a major motorsport park in Victoria and in New South Wales where it's badly needed. Um, and I'd love to see more government money. That's only a very small hit list, but we'll, we'll work towards getting a lot more engagement with not only our people. And the other thing I'd like to see is less red tape. We want to maintain the safety standards so that people can go around the track in complete safety, but we don't want to tie it up in, in red tape. So we're working pretty hard on, uh, on licenses online and uh, databases and all the sort of stuff that you should take for granted in sport. Well, it's a, it's a big task in front of you, but you seem to have a, a real enthusiasm for it. I mean, talking to a lot of the f officials on the weekend out at Sandown, they were a bit sort of suspicious when you came in. Having sort of seen you around and doing stuff, they understand that you do have a passion for the sport. You've certainly developed one, and, uh, and good luck for the future. I mean, the, the sport has a lot of challenges in front of it, but uh, I think that there's enough sort of enthusiasm and enough will to, to, to meet those challenges in the future. So for now, Eugene Rocker, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thanks very much, Brett. And thank you to you at home for joining us. Now, remember, if you'd like to enter that competition for the uh, tickets to the Shannons Nationals, that's um, online now. Go to the Impit Lane, impitlane.com, and you can enter there. Next week on the program, our final show of the season, we've got a band in, live music, and a whole lot more, including Indy 500, everything. That's next week on the program. Until then, from all of us here, bye for now.
Why should you get your car tuned with a Dynotech Dyno? Your car will be more fuel efficient. An accurate tune means saving money at the pump. Your car is safe. It never has to leave the workshop to be tested. Increased performance. Optimise fuel consumption and more power. Reduced emissions. Protect the environment by minimising your carbon footprint. To find your nearest Dynotech workshop, go to www.dyno.com.au. Dynotech by Dynodynamics.